Yep. talking about gravity um folks welcome to the jake feinberg show what an honor it is to connect with a cat divine timing here shua taylor welcome to the jake feinberg show you. you know i wanted to ask you we we're just before i want you to talk about the the thing about guitar players like i think like dickie betts or people like that you think about the melodies that they are able to how many melodies do you know is that the key to being an improvisational soloist because then you can keep layering on top of the groove with interesting things to say. Yeah, yeah. How many melodies do you know? You can riff on What I'm saying is, isn't that what makes an interesting improvisational solo? Yeah, yeah. Like, I, I think something that you can really glue yourself to and, you know, it kind of glues itself to you. It's something that's uh, not necessarily... I, I don't want to say catchy because catchy is a, a lot of things. Mm. But just something where, like, you feel like there's a a repeat or a home or a, a turnaround. Like if I think of melody, it can be something as simple as just one note. Um, as long as there is movement somewhere else. Um, in the rhythm section. In the rhythm section, you know? And we, we were talking about gravity. And yeah, like, gra like riff on that. Like, so when I look at gravity is I look at, you know, you have this octave range and you're always going to come back to one spot sooner or later. And, you know, I guess music is really that. It's just this huge journey. And then we just pick and choose when we really want to stop and smell the roses hmm. on something. I, I can stay here and I can move anywhere and I can smell the roses there. And I, I love this analogy because, like, every time I stop to smell the roses, there's, like, so many more discoveries to be made <laughs> before I move to kind of the next place. But no matter what, no matter how far I go down, I'm always going to come back to exactly where I started. And then the same thing, I just use gravity to move the opposite way. And that melody... For me, was really just that one note for me. Hmm. Right, right. Um, so simplicity, and then branching out from that with the within the mathematics. Uh, I mean. Can you talk about where you need to grow the most as as a person or a player at this point in your life? Um, I mean, the only times that I've 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 just learned to be comfortable being uncomfortable. Yeah, and that's the only way I grow. I was I was about to say I think like places I could learn like being courageous, um, putting myself in uncomfortable more was something I always. But didn't you do that in Logan too? Put myself in the uncomfortable. Yeah. Was yeah, that, sure, cause that's a know. pretty hip town, right? I mean, that's, that is the town. Pretty hip town. Yeah. I mean, like, I feel like there's, a something to say about what a counterculture does, you know? So like, yeah, it's, there's a counterculture in Utah. There's a lot of Mormons. Um, but like, I think since that you have this counterculture, you can glue yourself to, you stop being uncomfortable all the time going out. Like I always know that I'm going to just fit into the counterculture. Right. So right, here, right. you know, Getting out of your comfort zone is, I mean, Tucson's a way different place than Logan, you know. Like, hey, man, that's why you met Jake Fiverr. Yeah, exactly. You know, I mean, this is so beautiful, man. I mean, can you talk, though, <laughs> ultimately, ultimately, I mean, when you, where do you feel like, um, yeah, I mean, to me, like, it's okay to be uncomfortable. I think that's really the only way that you can actually truly evolve in life. And I just wonder about if you can talk about, 
the journey that it's taken for you, clearly in that solo, you know, you have found your individual voice. And I wanted you to talk to younger cats about, it's a, it's a forever journey. Let's be clear. Let's be clear. Okay. But what are the antecedents that younger cats need to do? Because we're saturated in mediocrity, mediocrity today. Mm -hmm. The content that's out there is, you know, you have to seek or you have to know, or like me, just live in a bubble. Yeah. Okay. So, what are your what's your advice to your cats about finding their individual voice? Um, no, it's always changing. I think for me, like I get I get hung up in the sense that I'm not the musician I was once, or I don't play like I used to. I don't have the same licks. I'm not like, um, I, I'm a different musician now, and that means my tastes are different too. You know, I used to be like a big Satriani and Eric Johnson kind of cat. I always wanted to shred. And now I like totally find myself just wanting to play two notes or, you know, literally just like, I just want to like play back and forth between something and see what's there. But to like someone younger to find your own voice is just think about, for me, it's always been think about like the music you want to hear in the world. If there isn't, you just think about. Well, or what, or the soundtrack of your mind. Yeah. The soundtrack of your mind. Right. Jacob Collier says it really well at one point. He was like, you know, just like, uh, pretend the music started. What do you hear? <laughs> and then play that. You know, and I, I love that. That's so true. Like, what? Well, it just yeah. You see what's happening. Do you have a bounce going on in your head pretty much all the time? I mean, how how much like in terms of the germ of a song, an original tune? Like, where does it come? Does it come through you all at once, or does it piecemeal? I would say I'm much more ADHD about it, and I don't think there's pitch all the time in my head. You know, I think a lot of the times it's a, yeah, right. Of, of course. Whatever. You know, I think it's like yeah, whatever. It takes some time. You, you know, come on. It takes a minute to warm up. But yeah, sometimes I don't think all the time. Once a day, there is there is some sort of bop that comes to your head. Once a day, and if there isn't, I don't think you're really listening for it enough. Right. I, I, right. You gotta listen. Gotta listen. Deep gotta listening. Listen. I tell all my students, listening is learning. If you're not listening, you're not learning, and that is just like. Do you play games with them to show them what that means? Well, totally, and I'll literally just be like. Like, I know it's boring to sit here and listen to this, but listen to it. Is your picking consistent? Do you, can you go quieter? You know? And like for, you know, for a beginner or whatever range there is, there's just so many things to listen to. It doesn't necessarily have to be just the note I'm listening to, but the, the silence in between or the strokes even. Is it all, all clean, you know? Just listen to that, you're gonna learn what needs to be fixed about that listening is learning wherever you can just really shut up and focus listen you'll learn something uh, i wanted you to just riff for a minute on a band that uh i'm long overdue for a trip up there to logan but um you know i connected with those guys at tree ford festival in in boise uh guava tree and i wanted you to talk about how even musical collaborations have you you know you, it seems like you guys probably have you collaborated before or like, yeah yeah you know? i've at one point or another, I've jammed with every single one of them, and I think I've been in, in a jam room playing or in a band with almost all of them at some point. What about Trayson? Um, Trayson and I, I don't know if we've ever been in a band together. But you were, what do you admire about him as a bass player? Well, as a guitar player, first and foremost. Yeah, see, I, I, I mean, I don't think I've even seen him playing. Oh, before. dude, he shreds. You know, he's a shredder. For but sure. I mean, the, 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 again, it's just like that. That uh, he can he play with soul. I mean, that's the, that. Fuck of course, yeah. of course, he Fuck can. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I mean, it's it's like it's like this is not about riffology. You know, this is about like telling. He can he tell a story. Yes, I believe, he, yes. He has. I would say he's totally achieved musical fluency on the guitar, and then also to even talk about musical the fluency. Based, he's got like you know, it's so different to play guitar as a lead guitar player, rhythm guitar player, and then jump to bass. Even rhythm guitar, I feel like, is different than bass. There, There's, like, I think there's more on the line as a bass player. Absolutely. You know, so, like... Everything's that, on the line, The dude. fact that he's in a four-piece, like, Guava Tree with literally two string instruments and then two percussion instruments. Yeah, right. And he's holding down half of that <laughs> shit, you know? Like, that's pretty awesome. Uh, yeah. Dude, that is sick. It, it's fucking... It's really incredible. Coming from guitar, jumping into... Uh, uh, I know he played bass in a, another band before that. I'm pretty sure. I think he played in a band with Beatnik um, as a bass player. Or maybe that was his first band. Whatever it was, that's fucking badass. Um, 
And I, you know, you've seen Guava Tree. I feel like their formula is very fluid and lo like they can do whatever they want. They have. Full it's a control. raga. It's it's a punk raga thing. Exactly. They got full control of the journey they're about to take you on. Like, I don't even know if they know where they're going. I don't think they do, you but know. I know that they've got like ten steering wheels in their head, deciding where the hell they're going to end up. And the fact that you, you know. I've seen them several times. They've sure. always been blown away by that fluency he shows. They all command. Really. Yeah, because you know what? Without him, it would be a mess. Like to hold that together. Possibly. He's been in it the longest. Besides Mowgli. And, you know, so like he's been a consistent member for that band through two drummers. No, but I think the bass player, going back to what you said, I mean, it is kind of on the line. It, yeah. That, 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 that's the closer. Two outs in the ninth, bass is loaded up a run. You got to close the deal. Yeah, the bass player has the and even if he gets a little raggedy, best batting still, average for sure. Um, and he's got to close the deal. You um, can you talk about? Um, do you think that playing in unamplified settings help do helps you find your your individual voice on your instrument better? And what I say is a lot of the cats that I've interviewed going back. I don't care if it's the psychedelic rock bands, the late 60s or jazzers or whatever. I mean, they had to elicit sonic expansion through uh, physicality and, and soul. They didn't have the amplification. Mm -hmm. And they had to compete oftentimes with a B3 or a guitar if they were a drummer. And I just want you to talk about a time in your career where you were you – you couldn't rely on the technology. You had to rely on, on physicality and soul to generate sonic expansion. Uh. Yeah, I I think honestly, if you is that every night? <laughs> yeah, I, I play acoustic guitar a lot, and yeah. I really feel like I learned on acoustic guitar. I do play electric guitar a shitload, and I love electric guitar. And all my heroes, you know, I feel like are electric guitar players. But acoustic guitar, I think this is where you develop expression and mm. you know control, especially in your fingers. Like guitar players, I mean, most instruments, you you really have a touch. You have to develop a touch with your finger to. One, just gain your confidence and also experiment with, like, the different voices you can right. have. And either acoustic or, you know, amp, no pedals sort of a setting, I think, is what you want to be doing to achieve that, like, um, not fluency, but, like, confidence. Like, creative confidence to just, like, not do anything but... Hmm. If you make the beat, you make the rhythm, you, uh, you kind of do the melody, the low and the high. Um, yeah. What, what is your, how, what's the lineage of your... How far back do you go in the lineage of, of guitar music? What, like, who were some of your seminal uh, influences? Um, Actually, here's the better question. Forget that. I hate, that's a very, very vanilla question. Can you talk about being a street scholar versus being in the academy? The idea of learning, like learning on the bandstand as opposed to so many, you know, Sko, Kaliuta, all these cats. They never graduated Berkeley. <laughs> there was so much work that they left school before they graduated. Today, that would seem insane. Oh, I, I think that makes more sense as a musician. But there was more. There was more work. There was a touring circuit. Is my point. And so the question is for you in your experience: Have you been in the ivory tower? If not, can you talk about being a street scholar and learning music? Yeah. So I I didn't go to school. You know. I, I don't really... I took a few lessons or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, of course, yeah, yeah, yeah. My, my dad was really like, you can't take lessons until you play for five years. So I think that developed for me is in like, a, all right, figure out stuff, you know? And so when you're figuring out stuff, I think the really, really the only thing that'll confuse people or hold you back is terminology. What do you call it? Other than that, it's all the same. It's all sounds. It's all notes. It's all, it's all riffs you like or dislike. And... You know, you don't need a piece of music in front of you to learn your favorite guitar player's signature riff. You can listen back and forth and just play it and make sense of it in your own words, make sense of it in your own way. Um, not saying you shouldn't, like, 
try to learn what all the notes are, you know, it's really helpful so that you can communicate with other musicians. Did you, but, did you, I mean, you clearly, what, have, have you always played music by ear or do you, have you learned to read music too? I mostly play by ear. Right. I've you play by, I, I, love, I mean, those are my favorite cats. Yeah. I pretty much, everything is learned by ear and it always has been. Uh, me and my cousin, the only other music player I have in my family is my cousin. And we did this challenge with each other when we were like 12 years old, we gave each other an album and we had to learn the whole album by ear. And we each picked one. And so I, he gave me uh, Strange Beautiful Music, Joe Satriani. I gave him, like, Frizzle Fry by Primus. Um, <laughs> You're right, man. Really hard album for him. I felt bad. Mine was super diatonic. And I learned pretty much all the pentatonic positions from it. And, like, how to do regular real blues stuff, you know? Sure. Um well, the Primus stuff was like odd metered or what, what was difficult about it? I feel like Larry Lalonde in that album, just like, you know, he probably learned all of his guitar stuff. He said, fuck that. You know, like everything was super. Right. Uh, he just turned it inside out. Yeah. It sounds so inside. It honestly sounds wrong a lot of the time, but that's exactly what is so <laughs> fucking cool about it is like, I think it is wrong most of the time, but it's exactly what it, it, it complements it so well. Yeah. Um, you, you, uh. Can you talk about, do you feel like you're, you've, I mean, you do what you do to pay the bills and ha and support your family, but do you think your purpose in life is to, to be a healer as a musician? Hmm, a healer. Because that's what they were uh, in Brazil. Ayrton's, my Moreira, his dad was a, before, you know, Western medicine, uh, people had ailments and he would cure them. I mean, they were seen as doctors, musicians. And so that, as far as, as long as I do my show, that's all I care about is that we get back to a, con a universal consciousness where cats like Mowgli, Trace, and all those cats in that band, and so many other people that I love so much are, cons are seen as healers and compensated in the same way a doctor would be. I definitely feel like music, musicians are spiritual, spiritual healers. And like- That's what I mean. Um, I also see them as like, I guess, yeah, spiritual healers. That's a great way to look at it. Because, you know, it's it's a, from a teacher standpoint, like the reason why I like to teach music at the moment is because it's a, it's like a medicine to share, but it's a, a medicine that you, um, mm -hmm. it's like, it's like, it's a weird cross between medicine and exercise and spiritualism that you are in control of. And when I, when I sit down with my guitar, whether I'm depressed or sick, I just immediately feel relief and if i guess i do see my purpose in the world is at least sharing that whether it be through playing and making someone feel nice or teaching someone how to just use some of these notes um you know these notes exist whether we want them to or not we right. did not create i did humans did not make e e just exists and if you know how to find E and find the notes that sound good with E. Um, man, you, you, you got, you can make some magic. You can really just like, you can heal all wounds of the mind with an E <laughs> or with any other note. Pick any note you want. Schwa Taylor, we'll do this again, man. It was such an honor to hang with you, man. Thank you. Yeah. Been a pleasure. It's the Jake Feinberg Show. See you later.